Hello guys and girls and welcome to the very first episode of Let's Design a Scenario. In this series I am going to cover all the basics of Age of Empires 2 scenario design, including triggers, map design and all the other nifty stuff you can do with the editor. Basically I'll be designing a series of minigames while giving simple explanations of what I'm doing, how things work, etc etc, so that novice designers can follow what I'm doing and learn without having to spend hours wondering stuff like, how the hell am I gonna do this? So, if you're completely new to scenario design in Age of Empires 2, or even if you already know most of the things, but still feel like you could use a little help, then this series will most definitely have you covered. Anyways, now that introductions are out of the way, let's get straight into the action. Alright, so here we are on a rather tiny map. Basically, first things first, I'm playing on the user patch, which is a custom made mob, a mod, sorry. And basically it does a, it adds a lot of little tweaks and fixes a lot of bugs, but I'll try to keep, uh, keep things as vanilla as possible. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make an arena type minigame. So basically, you get to choose your class, you get to, and then you get to fight in an arena. It's pretty simple with upgrades and all, and all kinds of different enemies and, st and stuff. So first things first, we're gonna do the players. We've got four players. Player one, the player obviously. Uh, we're gonna make him green and Aztecs because I like Aztecs. Two, we're gonna make him. Uh, Who's gonna be the arena, the uh, like the player that owns all the buildings and stuff? So that one's gonna be grey. Three is gonna be the enemies. Let's make those red, because enemies are always red. And player four is going to be something I don't know yet. Probably a trader or merchant or something. An NPC. So what we wanna do is we first we're gonna give them some tribe names because if you don't do that they're, they're gonna get random ma names assigned to them like Alexander the Great or something you don't want one of your players to be named that maybe you do but I don't so we're just gonna uh, name this one Arena you're also using the immobile units AI which makes all the computers units just stand still and do nothing but attack uh, if they see one of your units of course an enemy unit Mobile units AI gold. The link to that is going to be in the description, along with that to the user patch if you want to use it. Player three is also going to be AI gold. Mobile units. Um, enemies. Yeah, sure. Enemies. Player four is just going to get a space bar right now. Uh, let's save this. All right. So we're gonna just start something with palisades. We're gonna Alright. So I like to keep things tidy so I'm first just gonna make a big X. And then I'm gonna kind of work my way towards it. I'm gonna leave one, two, three, four, five spaces open for four spaces open. For like a crowd that's cheering and stuff. So, one, two, three, four. We have one, two, three, four. All right. Let's remove these. Well, it just keeps the edges for now. So now we have kind of an idea of what it will look like. Alright, back to Arena, Palisades, one, two, three to each side, one, two, three to each side, one, two, three. That's fine. Oh, I, uh, yeah. Alright, great. Three, one, this. Three, alright. Um, this one's gonna be like this. So 
So now we have our basic layout of an arena. Um, something we're gonna do is we're gonna add a gate, but we're gonna do that later with triggers. And we're gonna do the terrain, that's a very important part obviously of map designing. We're gonna make it kind of dirty and stuff. Like first first we're gonna use some elevation to get uh, like a feel of a crowd that's sitting there. Like on stairs and stuff. All right, so now that we've got this, let's save it again. I'm a bit paranoid, I always save, way too often. All right, um, now we're actually not gonna need an entrance. We're gonna need a couple of entrances, but let's save that for later. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna make the terrain. Yeah, that's right, the terrain, obviously. We're gonna make it a bit dirty, but uh, with dirt one mainly. Yeah, I'm gonna use dirt one as the base. Alright. Now we're gonna mix it with a bit of desert. Just put a few patches down. Terrain mixing is always very important. If it's too, uh, too much, then it'll look weird, unnatural, and if it's too bland, it'll look just boring. I'm also gonna put a bit of dirt too. I don't like dirt too very much, but we're just gonna put a bit in there for just for the sake of it. And as you might have noticed, I've got dead farm here, building snow and all kinds of weird other terrains. This is added by the by the user patch. They are vanilla terrains, so even if you don't have the user patch, you can still see these. But you will just not be able to draw them without it. If you don't want to or can for some reason not install the user patch, there is a way to get them into your scenario by map copying them from another scenario. I'll provide a link for that in the description to a scenario where you could map copy them. So basically you download it and you select map copy, map copy is the train you want and you open your scenario directly with the edit scenario right here. And then you just map copy it in there, you paste it in there. Really simple. But let's get going. We're gonna add some dead farm because that looks like it's dirty a bit. Okay, that doesn't blend in very well. As you can see, you can see these lines and all. That doesn't blend very well. So we're gonna try to put some here. That's better. And here, nah, that doesn't blend very well. We're gonna remove that later. Here, yeah, maybe this one. Some here. Just a few random patches. Alright, uh, yeah, that'll do. One here, maybe. Alright, so we're gonna remove the ones that don't look good. Like this one. Um, this one. This one, maybe two. These are okay, this one. And the ones that are okay around them, we're gonna just put dirt one. That blends very nicely, as you can see. Here. I don't like this one, though. Uh, 
I'm really just experimenting. No, no not like this. That, yeah, this will do. This one, yeah, this one, yeah, that's good. Now let's try some dirt too, in just some places. Egg. As I said, I'm not a big fan of dirt too. It kind of, it stands out way too much. It's kind of weird. Dirt 3 on the other hand is a bit more grassy. Could just try to use grass 3 while we had it. Grass 3, no, that doesn't look very nice either. Could try to use leaves. They look a bit dirty and stuff. Yeah, leaves look cool, kinda. They give the arena a kind of a dirty feel. Like, there's been f <laughs> definitely been a lot of fighting in there. Let's do third one here. Oh. Although, actually, let's leave leaves here. For now, I think this will do just fine. And now that that wasn't a good idea. Leaves. If you're wondering how quickly I'm jumping between the trains, I simply press D for trains that start with D, like that far in dirt, and I press L to go to leaves. Pretty easy. Yeah, this will do. Alright, so we're gonna also add some citizens or spectators that are like watching on the people that are watching the fighters fight. For that actually we could try to use a uh, farm. Farm one is yeah, farm one is the one that appears when you when you've built it at first, yeah try to make it like kind of like wooden planks that people are sitting on uh huh no not that farm one this will do just fine yeah nice same for here although yeah this isn't really the right rotation but that doesn't matter Uh huh. Yeah, sure. This will do. Go back to grass. Do the same for here. As you can see, I'm kind of trying to blend the dirt of the palisades with the one of the farm. So yeah, it just gives a more detailed feel to it. Oh, let's yeah, I'll just put some dirt here. <laughs> now let's blend it with dirt. No grass. Yeah, just a little. Alright, so now that that's done, save it. I always do that. Alright, um, let's add some more palisades. Palisades, like right here. No, no, I don't like the look of that. Remove these. And put them like f right from the edges here. Yeah, that'll do. I usually don't like drawing walls and stuff over elevation because as you can see it just breaks the graphic. Nicely lined up walls, it just it just breaks the immersion and all. The realism. But with Palisades it's it's I guess it's kind of okay, especially since we're gonna remove these these middle ones later with triggers. So yeah, that's done. Let's Add some people, I guess, or let's uh, add some buildings here. We're gonna just fill these areas with buildings. Oh no, actually, that this is where the where the enemies are gonna come out of these four corners. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna fill this for this something. This third one for now. Gonna remove. No, that doesn't look good, does it? Uh, let's move one of these so we can place them quickly. That's a simple trick. If you move an object in the editor and then you press place, that object will be selected for you. Quite useful at times, like just now. So we're gonna use some stone walls here for these areas. Stone walls? What civilization is this? I don't like this. Koreans. Um, what's a good looking stone wall? Actually, that's perfect. <laughs> Stone wall, fortified wall. Uh, I I like stone wall. All right, let's just draw them along the edges here. All right. So now that that's done, we're gonna be placing some gates. This will do. No, oh, not really want that what I wanted, so... No, let's uh, remove these walls, actually. These middle pieces. We're gonna make a trigger, a couple of triggers. I always have one trigger at the very beginning that's named settings. If you don't know what triggers are, just Bear with me, they they do stuff in game. You just watch and learn, basically. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna name this one settings. It won't have a condition, it will simply do a couple of things. For one, it's going to remove object this palisade. Actually it's gonna remove just these middle two. See these? So we select one, set object no actually we s we select set object, then we press this palisade and we do go to object and now it's set. We do this the same for all of the other walls. Remove object, set object, this one, go to objects. And if, if the camera moves then it's set correctly. Like go objects, then it's selected. If it doesn't move then something went wrong. Obviously. The reason we're doing this and not just removing the walls in game, uh, like uh, like this, is because if we're gonna do it like this, then when the game starts, this will look like an edge piece. And that's not what we want. We want it to lo look exactly like it does now. So we just removed that, so this one's gonna be broken. So let's select it again, this one. Go to object, the camera moves, perfect. Let's do this a couple of times over. Right, so that's done. So now, if we just place uh, something here, a unit of ours, and maybe a unit, another unit, some, so that we don't win immediately or lose. A champion there, nice. So if we test the scenario, you will see. Oh, that's a town center, but you will see that these walls are nicely removed and these things didn't turn to edge pieces as they would if you removed them with the uh, with the delete function. So that's pretty perfect for now. Alright, let's quit game. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a gate, building gate player 2 obviously. Yeah, I could place it like this, but that's not really what I want, so... Yeah, I'm gonna place it like this. One like this. Yeah. Now let's... Um, uh -huh. Like this. Alright, so that's done. Let's uh, just test it real quick. By the way, we're gonna give every player except... Although, actually, yeah, we're gonna give every player uh, a unit, a hold of units, these are called, so that when we, when we test it, 
so they won't die. Just a battering ram. Player two one here. One for player three. We're gonna make these actual citizens citizens later. But yeah. Uh player four. For now, just so they won't get defeated and we win. Or uh, some stupid town center st uh, spawn somewhere. As it happens last time. Happened last time. As it happened last time. Alright, let's see. Cool. This looks quite cool, cool. doesn't it? Well, oh, I think oh, it does. Oh, a bit. Cool. Cool. So, we've got that going. Um, I hate how the view starts there. We're just gonna have to view set view. If you go to options, you can set the view. Just set view, go to view. It was set all the way over here, which wasn't really something nice. So now, no matter what we do, the scenario will start in this view. So, we're gonna do some other things, we're gonna, hang on, we're gonna try something out, we're gonna just add some, uh, watchtowers. Like here, and there. So we can't just do this, we can't, we can't just place them here. So, although, let me, let me try something out. And yeah, it removed the object. So what we're gonna do to do this, we're gonna we have got this one trigger with all the remove object effect. We're gonna add a new effect to remove object. Guess what? <laughs> so we're gonna remove all these edge pieces of the wooden palisades. So once again, if we were to do this in game, the other ones next to it would become an edge piece, and that's not what we want. We want to simply remove object this edge piece too, though. That's not actually necessary to be. We're just gonna do this one. And all the other ones. <coughs> what we're gonna do now is we want to create a watchtower in place of this edge piece. Where this edge piece was, it's gonna be removed, but wherever it was, we want it to be replaced by a watchtower. But we can't just place one here because it's still there technically. It ju it's just gonna remove, get removed the moment the game starts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to move this object away for now. We move it back though, so be because if we don't, these all, this one and this one and this one will turn into regular edge pieces. And that's not what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new effect on this trigger. We're gonna say create object. And we're gonna set the location right here where this piece was. Source player two, this is always important. This is not important for remove objects if you if you select the object itself. But in create objects it's it's always necessary. Source player two, that's whom the owner of all the buildings. Object list type buildings and the object itself will be I press W a watchtower. Let's so now that's done. We're gonna move this object back. Let's see what happens. Let's save it first, see what happens. Oak. As you can see, the edge piece is removed. These are still regular walls, and there's now a Bantu. nice watchtower. Oak. 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 So, let's do that for all the other ones. Let's move all the other ones away first. Move this one away as well. And this one. Alright, let's create object, search player 2, buildings, and watchtower. Set location right there. Whenever you set the location, you should be careful not to press an object, because if you do that, then it won't work. You can see the trigger stays red, and it simply won't work. We're gonna try to carefully select the right spot. There we go. And we're gonna do this for all the other, one other ones as well. Now that that's done, 
let's move the object back these edge pieces so the other ones won't turn into edge pieces and see what happens and we've got towers everywhere perfect uh, ah yes, I forgot to move these. Of course. In fact, we might not even need the gates. We're gonna remove the gates for now. They don't really look the way I want. I want them to. Or we could try to place the gates like one more this way. Oh, yeah, like this. Yeah, we're gonna leave the gates where they are, and no. yeah, we're just gonna leave them like this. Gates, no, actually not like that. Like this, and we're gonna remove these edge pieces. Here's a good demonstration of what happens when you remove the edge pieces like this. These still look like a wall right now, but as soon as we enter the game, let's mm. test it. They will have become regular cool. edge pieces Bantel. Bantel and they will look like it the moment we enter the editor again. I think they should. Yep, and they've become edge pieces. So, what we're gonna. We, I think we're gonna remove the gates for now, they won't be necessary, in my opinion. We might add them later again. But for now, let's just remove them. So we're gonna add some citizens for each player, some spectators that watch the carnage down there. Um, we're just gonna add some for each player, so they won't have to build stuff. Like they won't have to. There won't be a town center spawning somewhere, or they won't be defeated. So we're gonna obviously do villagers, lots of them. As you can see, these are very ugly they uh, they're placed uh, information like uh, on each tile one but we want them to be much more crowded so there's two things we can do if you have the user patch installed you can press ctrl s to enable off-grid placement what this does is it allows you to place them anywhere like as you can see well that's not what we wanted it's gonna allow you to place them anywhere as you can see, these are now like this. I can place them as close to each other as I want them. If you press Ctrl S a second time, you can even stack them on top of each other. Look, I can just place one where I want. That's a bit ridiculous, but you get the idea. If you press it a third time, I think it, it, en it enables stacking, but is still aligned to the grid. Let's remove these. And if you press it the first time, it will simply be, be, be back to normal. If you don't have the user patch installed, you obviously cannot make use of this feature. But it will work even on but it will work uh, in game even on players for players who don't have the user patch. So if you make a scenario with this feature and someone without the user patch plays it, it will still work for them. They will see the units like the as close as they are placed together. So let's place them. Egg, okay, um, a villager. Let's place a no, these don't really look simple enough. Of course, we can have some spearmen, some guards, or maybe. Uh, we could have some... One unit that always looks good is the... Um, hang on. Militia, of course. Kind of looks like a citizen person. The Vote Raider, of course. Yes, the Vote Raider. Yes, perfect. Okay. Let's rotate these. Oh. As you can see, I've left some spaces open, but I'm doing that intentionally. 
Another little thing uh, you need to know about the editor is whenever you place a unit, uh, it won't actually appear in the rotation it appears in. So we see this villager is kind of looking this way, but when we enter the game, he will actually be facing the way he faces when we first rotate him. So let's press it. Turns out he was standing, up, he was uh, looking this way the whole time. So yeah, that's something to watch out for. They sometimes rotate themselves. So just make sure you rotate them to make, even if they look the right way, just make sure to press rotate once on them in case they are actually looking another direction. This one, yeah. And this one. Alright, I have left some spaces open for other players, obviously. I have uh, the red guy, vote raider. You can also press right click to rotate them the other way. However, if you do that, it may not always hit the right one. So, yeah, be careful when you do that. Whenever there's a one of them is selected like this, just pre use select and press somewhere else. Click somewhere. And it'll go away. It's kinda annoying, to me at least. Alright, player 4, yellow. We're just gonna give this guy some random people as well. Alright, this looks good enough, I'd say. We could be lazy and just map, map copy them all the way over here. Or we could just place them again manually, but we're not gonna do that, we're gonna map copy them. Because I'm lazy. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna show you how map copy works real quick, if you don't know how to, how to do that. In the train section you press map copy down here. You can select an area. You uh, we select this one and we press copy selected map area. So if we do this now it will be copied exactly the way it is. We can rotate it. We want to rotate this one to the right for up here I think. Should be right. Ah perfect. Rotate it to the right once again for here. Oh that was wrong. Much better. And once more Ah, yes, perfect. Um, we're gonna remove, we're gonna place the wall back. Of course, as you could see, I could just place that wall. Um, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna disable off-grid placements. We, we had it enabled, it was one time we pressed uh, Ctrl and S once. So we're gonna press it three more times. One, two, three. And now it should be enabled. Let's see. Uh, units somewhere. As you can see, all the units are aligned on grid. Again. Let's save it. So, what we're gonna do is... We're gonna make a class selection. The player is gonna s be able to select a class from one of... Uh, from either Archer, uh, Militia, or I'm gonna need to figure out some names, but uh, one ranged unit, one fast melee unit, and one slow melee unit with heavy armor, of course. Though actually, before we're gonna do this, we're gonna add a little to this to this area. We're gonna there's a lot of useful objects if you will go to the other section in the unit section and select player Gaia. We've got lots of interesting stuff here. In case you didn't know, could add something to make it look more interesting. We could add a hole in the ground, a crater. Uh, might look good somewhere in one of these places. Of course, with such little objects, we might really want to enable off-grid placement. Let's do that right now. Control S. Right now we can place them literally exactly where the cursor is pointing. There's one here. Maybe a few more here. 
uh, one, yeah, one will do here. Could play some cracks. That looks kind of cool. Though I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, we could just place one of those there. Could also uh, do some terrain stuff in there to make it interesting. Uh, the base elevation is four. Yes, so we're gonna have some actual holes. Although does that look good? I'm not sure. Just some holes, yeah. So now it's there's a bit of variation now. Could now let's go back to Gaia. Other, let's see what else we can find. We've got. We can just scroll through these. We've got all kinds of flowers, flower beds. This is all very interesting if you're looking for a forest type area. What were we gonna do? Heads on spike? Nah, no, that's not really. I guess it could look cool, but. Not what I'm thinking of right now. Haystack. We'll see about that. Yeah, we could uh, add some paths to make things look actually ugly. Like, um, whenever we, we play something like that, we shouldn't just place it randomly around, obviously, or just like one by one. This looks, you can see that it's just placed there. We're gonna have to find some way to make it to make them blend with the environment. So what I'm thinking of right now is one here. Looks like a little bit of mud right there. Plants, rocks. Rocks are interesting. We can just place some right here and use the up and down arrow keys to quickly reselect it like select relic now and select rock again it will change the frame so you can also do this by rotating the object but yeah I prefer to just quickly up and down to reselect them and get the right frame of course you can place it here so let's enable off grid placement number two you can place it anywhere even if it's red like this. Yeah, that looks okay. <laughs> Wounds, kind of something. Rubbles, yes. As you may recognize them, these are what appears under the straight building. When you when you destroy a building, these appear below it. So let's um, place one here, give it a bit of a really dirty feel. And uh, skeletons, of course. Could place some random skeletons here. May oh, not remove the rubble, of course. It had to. Why wouldn't it? Skeleton, yeah, we could place one here. Something to make it look more deadly. Uh, as you can see, it appears one of the palisades got removed, so most yes, this one's gonna be broken. Let's reselect that. No, that was the wrong one. This one, nice. Safe. Alright, let's see what else we can place. Um, like trees. Could try to fit some trees in here. Yeah, like pines. Could try to fit some pines in here. Like, or some dead pines at least. Let's not fill it up too much though. I'm gonna place this one somewhere here. Yeah, next to the spine. Sure. Although behind it, it might look better. Alright, we've got some more dead trees, I believe, in the oak trees section. 
Let's look at that. Oak oak forest tree, yes. Uh, let's just place one down and... Or, yeah, like this. So, the map is basically done. And these, we're not going to design these areas because the player is not going to be seeing them. Although, we could uh, just do it for the sake of it in case he gets far enough. What we're also gonna do is we're gonna f try to yeah we're gonna try to fix the elevation a bit because as you can see these walls are terribly broken. So um, up here it's elevation six right? That's six here. Let's try to make it five here. Oh, not what I wanted. Yes, that looks much better. Oh, oh god. Not what I wanted. Let's put this back. Make it four. No, not what I wanted. Alright, um, six. That's okay. Six. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> 